Okay, we are recording. Awesome. Uh, welcome, Lexi. I'm super excited to have you here and share your knowledge with the ladies community. I know we've been trying to make this happen for a while, so I'm glad that we could. Obviously, with technology, it makes it so much better. So it's awesome. Yeah. And yeah. I wear sweatpants. Exactly, right? <laughs> I know, cool. Uh, so, what I want to go over, if you guys are tuning in live or watching the recording, I really just want to get real with Lexi, chat about what is she going through? How did she build Wax On Wax Bar? What are challenges that she faced? Different tips for entrepreneurs and if people want to start their own business. And we'll then open it up for some Q&A and really just get real because I want you to be able to take away tips and learn from each other within the community so that we can help and support each other to grow and excel. There's, you know, lots of abundance, so let's make it happen. Uh, cool. So Lexi, do you want to just start out quickly, introduce yourself the way you like to be introduced, and, and then we can kind of go from there. Amazing. Sure. And I like completely love what you're doing here. And I agree. It's so important just to like share all the knowledge. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm all for it. So happy to be here. here. And um, yeah, so I guess I'll just explain kind of how I got started and just the beginning of wax on um, because um, shockingly usually for most I actually did not come from aesthetics at all so uh, my background was actually in consulting management consulting and I literally was just the person who needed to find a convenient affordable uh, quality place for a wax so when I started wax on um, seven years ago, or seven and a half year, years ago, I guess now, um, the only options were like the CD Manny Petty places and then expensive spas. And so I was traveling all the time for work um, and just wanted to find a great place for the wax. And I um, saw the concept popping up everywhere in the States and thought like this was super brilliant um, and that we needed it in Canada. And so that's kind of like how I got the concept. And then I spent like probably a year and a half still um, consulting and then building up like the vision of Wax On uh, to launch it because I always had the intention of opening more than one location um, if I was going to do this. So yeah. So back to that. So if other women are listening, watching, and they have an idea, what are some things that they can do to actually make it a reality? It took you a year and a half, but I know some people get so stuck in that analysis and they just don't know where to start. Like, how did you actually execute it and make it happen? Yeah. So I think that that's such a good point. And it's, it really is like truly what sets people apart is finally taking that leap. And I'm, I'm a perfectionist for sure. Um, and you can totally get caught up in trying to make every single thing perfect before opening a business or launching whatever it is that you're intending to do. Um, and so what I did and I found really useful is I built, and I used to do this in my consulting projects um, and just kind of applied it to wax on is I built like a project schedule and I just had line by line by line, like every single thing that I needed to do in order to start wax on. And a lot of it at the beginning was like, um, a lot like less kind of taking that exact leap and like having to put down money and make like a firm kind of point that you were going to be moving forward. But eventually as I ticked through the items and had dates, deadlines assigned to it, I just ticked through and finally I got to a point where it was like, okay, you actually have to do this. Like I need to sign a lease or, you know, incorporate that company or, or whatever it is that that's like tangible moment that you actually have to kind of jump. Yeah. And I think it's important just to kind of gradually get yourself there because it's so daunting when you think of this idea that you have and it's like, Oh my, like for me, I was like, well, what the hell do I know about waxing? Like other than the fact that I'm a client. And so it's just getting through each of those points um, because you're in marketing and you're hiring and you're training and you're like, everything is, uh, is in front of you. So I think it's important to put those like project schedules together. So then when did you know that Wax On was an actual feasible business plan and option for you? Yeah, so quite quickly, like, so very beginning, I just immediately, like, when I was, I am and was an Excel nerd, so I just, like, went in and I started to put together, like, 
Googling like how much does a wax pot cost and just started to put together what I thought of this business would look like from a cost and overhead perspective and then how many people I would need to see in order for it to be profitable. And I very quickly realized like, okay, you know what, this is something like I, I, I could, I could actually make money at this. This could be successful. Um, so I didn't get bogged down um, because I wasn't going to be able to get bank financing anyways. I had fortunately made enough money that I put every dollar into wax on I had at the time and I was 24 years old. So it was kind of like, what do I have to lose at this point? Really? Um, and so I like just invested everything, but what I didn't get bogged down and down on is like building a very formal, robust business plan. That's like 25 pages long. Instead, I focused on, okay, like the important things, like, am I going to make money at this? Like, is this solving a problem that currently exists in our area or am I just making this up? Um, and across Canada and then what's the competition look like? So who are my competitors? I did like a whole map of um, Ontario and like pinpointed and the price points of everyone and all of that stuff. But that was kind of my two real big analysis to then determine like, okay, yeah, this is like a good idea and I should move forward. Yeah. Very cool. And then, so you bootstrap the entire thing from the, in the beginning. Yeah. So my first two locations, I actually didn't get bank financing until, um, our third and fourth location. Okay. And then in those locations, I got, um, Canadian small business loans, which are really great if you can get them. And I actually have a friend who just got them for brand new business. So you can, you can get them. But, um, unfortunately when I started the first one, like I wasn't able to get that bank financing. So I, um, yeah, I just like went for it and <laughs> Cool. And I yeah. know it's kind of a controversial topic because some entrepreneurs say like, don't bootstrap, get financing from the beginning. Others go the whole like investor route. Do you have any tips on financing a business? Cause I know that can be so overwhelming and there's so many options now. Yeah. So that's one thing. Like I think that there are a lot more options available these days, um, especially for women. So uh, just like my girlfriend who just launched a business, like she put together an amazing business plan and bought a small business um, loan around it, which is incredible. So I think that they're looking for more entrepreneurial women, which is great. Um, but, you know, personally, from an investor standpoint, I still own 100% of my business. Wow. I own the investor thing and I actually bought them back out of it. And it's really important. I think if you go down that route and I know eventually I will bring in an, invest, an investor, but, um, it's when you're starting a business, I think it's really challenging to understand truly how aligned you'll be, uh, in terms of like your values and where you want to see the business go. And that goes the same with any partnership really that you're if you're going to go in with someone else, like you really, really, it's a marriage. It truly, truly is a marriage. Heard. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've heard that, you know, people really need to take the, that very seriously. When you take on an investor, you, yeah, you're in bed with this person and you have to see the same vision. Is that some of the struggles that you found when you took on the investor that you just didn't see the same vision for your business? Yeah. So again, it's much, much like a relationship. So you know, the beginning is like very much the romancing phase of like you're dating and everything sounds so nice and you're so aligned and, um, and you have the same vision and long-term vision. And then you sign the dotted line and all of a sudden it's like, Oh, wait a second. No, like we're not actually aligned. Um, and it's, and it's so important to me that we continue to open wax ons um, in the same way that we have been culture, my people, like how we grow and the quality of our service are all so important. And so if someone that I partner with doesn't see those same things, um, then that's just not meant to be like, I've never been someone to grow and scale, um, overly quickly, I guess, like too fast, um, at the sacrifice of quality. I think it's important to make sure that we're controlling both. So, um, yeah, I think it's, it's a huge decision and you just have to really, really, truly know the person you're marrying essentially. Yeah. It, thanks for bringing that up because I think people don't do that seriously enough. 
What, yeah. so let's chat a little bit about expansion. I'm like totally nerding out business wise here because you're awesome and yeah. I love what you've built. And so you've, how did you expand wax on? I know you've gone more of the franchise route. Can you talk a little bit about that? The pros and cons and, and different expansion opportunities for people if they're looking to build a national or global brand. Yeah, absolutely. So when I started Wax On, so one store, I was like, okay, here's the plan. We're going to launch our one store and then we're going to franchise the shit out of this thing and like have 500 in like 10 years, whatever. Yeah. Like I was, I thought very differently than when you actually get into it and you realize like, wow, this is a lot of work. And also in order to franchise, like you're selling someone a toolbox essentially to run their business. Like that's why they're investing in you. That's why they pay a franchise fee and a royalty and all that stuff. And so very quickly I realized like, okay, we need to pump the brakes, continue to open more corporate locations and make sure that we know how to open them, operate them and make sure that they're profitable. So we have six corporate stores that I own and then the remainder seven are franchise. And, um, and then we didn't really start franchising heavily until we opened our fifth location. And then we felt at that point, okay, we have the answers. Like we really truly have a solid toolbox that we can provide our franchise partners with that will allow them to grow. Um, and fortunately we have almost every single one of our franchise partners is opening or is intending to open their second location. So I think that speaks to the fact that we've been one very intentional in who we choose as our franchise partners. Again, it's not a, let's just pump out as many wax ons as possible. It's let's choose the right partners to grow with just like an investor, like your franchise partners. It's a marriage. You're, you're in this together for a long time. Um, and making sure that we're very intentional in who we partner with and that they're the right fit and that what they're looking for in their entrepreneurial dream is what we can provide them with at Wax On. Yeah. And it's so building a team and scaling is part is sometimes the hardest thing. Like what, mm -hmm. what tips do you recommend to people to build that team and actually find those people? Because for you to infuse the Wax On culture into somebody else who's building that franchise is not a small thing. Like you have mastered that and mm -hmm. I'm sure you're always still learning as well. So how, yeah. what are your success factors into building and expanding? Yeah. So I came into this and heard like the aesthetic and industry was so catty and high turnover and just like a lot of negativity around staffing. And so I, from the get-go, said to, who's now gone from my summer home manager of my first store to our VP of operations, I said to her, like, absolutely not. Like, we, this cannot be wax on. Like, I want people who are with us forever. Like, we want to hold on to our people um, and provide them with a place that they love to work. And I've always been of the mentality, if you love where you work, you'll provide superior service to our clients. Um, and so that started right in our locations and from there it's really grown through our management team. But, you know, honestly, it's the first and second people that you hire are going to set the culture tone for your entire company. You're, you're really relying on those two people to spread that culture throughout your business. And, um, and fortunately like combined with a lot of luck and, and then as well as, some intention behind it um we have like incredible first and second and third hires that have been with us some of our summer old teams been with us since we opened so now seven and a half years ago our waxologists even so um i think that that and then when we bring in our franchise partners that we're interviewing as potentials like if they don't buy into that it's like we call it like our wax on bug of just living and breathing the wax on way and being super proud of where you work, um, that then they're just not the right fit. So we're constantly like evolving around our culture and we just, um, went and, uh, redid all of our core values and just met with every location. And it's just, it's super important. And in our industry, it's just around like respect communication and like providing people 
with a voice because the people who are working like our waxologists each and every day, like they're front, front line, like they're seeing what's going on and what's right and what's wrong. And I want them to come to me if something's not working. Like I want them to feel like they can have that voice and, and speak up and, um, and let me know like, oh no, we need to change this. Like this isn't working any longer or people are asking for this. Like let's make this change kind of thing. What yeah. do you think is the hardest, what are some of the challenges that you've had when growing a team? Is it just finding the right people and maintaining that culture or is there anything else that you've had to work through to build? Yeah, I think it's like the whole saying like hire slow, fire fast. Mm -hmm. I think if you have, and especially in a team where everyone's working so closely together, like in our locations, for example, um, you, if there's a bad egg, like it can really disrupt an entire team's performance, um, their happiness and, and overall culture. And so I've really tried to follow that rule. Um, but we're in retail and you're going to have like the issues where people just, they don't show up or, you know, like it's, you, I was rolling out of bed on Sundays, like to go and open our locations when we started because some wouldn't show up for their shifts, you know? So it's, um, it's a constant battle, but I think that it really goes a long way and we see a lot less of those issues when we do have a solid foundation and culture in place um, because people don't want to let you down. Yeah. And when did you know, so still kind of staying on this expansion topic, when did you know that you needed to expand services? Because now you have laser and products and you're really expanding the wax on brand. Yeah. So had you, if you asked me like when we launched wax on the first two or three years, like, Oh, will you get into laser? I've been like, no, no, no. Like we're only waxing. But I also in the following sentence would say, but we're always on top of the hottest trends and blah, 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 blah. Right. So it was like a funny, it was funny with the introduction of laser because it, I'd been thinking of it forever. And, um, it finally took me like, to sit down with my VP operations and say, you're going to think I'm crazy, but like, I really think that this is something we need to do. Um, and again, we worked on it for probably almost two years before we launched it, just to make sure that we were choosing the best laser, the best of everything. Yeah. Um, and if we were going to do this, we were going to do it right. But we kept coming back to like, what's wax on's core, you know, value proposition and it's providing like our smoothest experience every time and we saw it as being able to provide like that hair removal destination now we had clients coming in and saying like oh, i don't want to leave you but i've got to go get laser and then i'm going to come back to you for like my full brazilian because i just want to get a bikini laser like it just didn't make sense yeah. so i think it's important to like stick to what you truly do best and, and specialize in, um, but keep an open mind to the fact that you, especially this day and age, like you need to be able to pivot your business and make those changes if you see the moment, you know, is right. You also mentioned two really important things though. Number one is knowing your audience and what they, what are their patterns and what do they need? So you yeah. listened to when they were telling you, you know, I go for here for laser and then I'll come back. So yeah. make those changes based on what your client needs. Um, and then also just really continuing to, I even forgot what I was going to say. You remember the clients and you listen to the clients and then what else did you say? Heck, I don't even remember. Doesn't matter. Uh, Probably yeah. wasn't that good. Uh, no, it was. It was. You had said you listening to the client super important and being able to like pivot and make changes. I yeah. think is big in business. Yeah. Like yeah. just being able totally. to make this. I'll I'll remember the other thing I was yeah. going to say. Not a big deal. <laughs> no. um, but yeah, tell us then. To bring us to like you as a person who was yeah. Lexi when you started this business oh and now because I know when I talk to so many women in the community confidence you know insecurities anxiety overwhelm they are dealing with so many challenges mentally and emotionally that prevent them from building their business and then they think like look at Lexi she's built wax on and and they a lot of us put other people on a pedestal thinking like we can't do that and oh, yeah. we can and nobody's perfect and so I want to give a little bit more into the insight of who you were and and kind of what you went through and how you evolved as wax on grew 
Yeah. I mean, I mean, it's such a massive change. And I think about it all the time because I think in having your own business, you do gain that confidence every year you're through it. And um, I remember so vividly like two moments in one when I was alone for the first time in our wax on location at Summerhill and just thinking like, holy shit, like, what have I done? Like, what if no one shows up? What if we're terrible? Like, what if I just made the biggest mistake of my life? All of those things came flooding through. And the second part of it was I couldn't get over the questions. Like you're asked everything. And especially in the beginning when you really don't have those like policies, procedures, and everyone knows their exact role and, and all of that down pat, pat. Like I was so overwhelmed with the number of questions I got. I finally was just like, I don't know. Like if you haven't realized, like I actually don't have a clue what I'm doing. Like this is like off, like I'm just off the cuff, like trying to figure it out. And again, fortunately I had like such a great team that together we like worked through the kinks. Um, we turned over other than those like four people that are still with me today, we turned over an entire team at wax on our first location. And it was just like, Nope, you're not going to cut it. You're not going to cut it. And I think it's just like, yes, you're, I'm a completely different person now than I was then. And of course, like some of the things are similar, but like very much you grow into this role as an entrepreneur. Like it's, um, it's just making sure that you do like, don't judge yourself too hard. Like if you are passionate and I think that's the primary thing that you have to have is that passion because the amount of work that it is to get it started is immense and if you don't have that passion and grind to go for it you'll never be that top performer you'll never have that successful business like it takes that at the beginning so I think that that's most important and if you have that passion like that'll overcome any of your fears mm -hmm. um and secondly I think it's just your gut too like I just really knew it was gonna work like I just, it wasn't really an option that it wasn't. I just like in my gut was like, yep, like this, this is happening and like, it's going to crush it. And, um, and it, and it did like our first location was thankfully very successful. Mm -hmm. So I think those are really important though for people to just base their decisions on that, like yeah. their passion and, and then, and really their gut. Yeah. And I mean, right now, what are some things personally and professionally that, you are working through and that you're working on? Oh my God. So I literally, we have a management meeting on Thursday and any or any of my team that's going to listen to this will now know, but like <laughs> every management meeting we are supposed to say like our biggest personal miss. And this is like personally, professionally, but like personal, like I want our team to be, be vulnerable. And I think that self-improvement and having a very strong self-awareness is super important. And so that's taken me like till this year to truly be very vulnerable with my team. Um, I always wanted to kind of like lock them from any bad that was coming um, and just let them focus on the business. But I think it's important that they understand like, the trials and tribulations that we go through as a business together and as a team, we become stronger as a result of it. Um, so I like, I'm constantly trying to work personally on myself and grow myself into a better CEO this year. I brought on a consultant like purely for that to look at me as a leader and how I can better um, be, you know, a CEO of a company that we're hoping to grow even faster and bigger. Um, because I think it's so important. Yeah. And so what are some tips that the consultant has given you to be a better leader? Oh my God. He's always critiquing me. <laughs> <laughs> Is it hard when they are critiquing you? Do you take it personal or are oh, you? Yeah. yeah. I'm so defensive. Yeah. Like that's one of my things I need to work on. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but I, vulnerability is a big one. So like I had, I, you know, with this whole investor raise that I went through, um, most of my team, like really didn't truly understand the impacts of that. And it was actually right alongside when I had my daughter Piper, like I was going through my investor raise in labor, like on the phone with my lawyer and it was awful. Like I, it was my first baby, like hormones are wild. And I was just like 
dead set on getting this deal done. Um, and so it was really important. Like one of the things he, you know, bought me to do is like sit down my team, my whole team. It's like, bring them through those moments because they'll appreciate the, like what you went through for them and the company. And so vulnerability is like actually a huge one that, uh, he coaches on a lot. Um, and then like just, you know, certain just characteristics of myself as, as, um, that I need to, you know, focus more and slow down on certain things, speed up on other things, like the details and certain things are important and others are not. So, yeah. It's so true. And in sometimes things come up, I'm a huge, obviously you ladies and TLC know I'm huge into self-development and always, mm -hmm. I think awareness is so important. And even sometimes things come up and you think like, how the hell am I still worrying about this? Like even yeah. I'm in a workshop right now and someone said something and I thought to myself like, holy crap, I still care what people think. Yeah. I still am playing small or when I say th something, I'm fearful or I don't say something because mm -hmm. I'm scared. And you don't realize how much fear still plays a part in who we are. And so my commitment the rest of the 90 days of 2019 is just to every day think to myself, like, how can I just be more authentically myself today? Yeah. I don't care what people think because we live in this society of shoulds that we get really caught up in, in who we should be. Totally. And yeah. very much around people pleasing and yeah. that's around, you know, not showing your authentic self. So I completely agree. And it's something like, I always am working on is yeah. like, just let yourself, you know, and truly who you are, um, be heard and be seen. I think it's so important. And, um, for sure, we're so caught up in what other people are thinking about us. And then we're also so caught up in what we think of ourselves. And I think it's, we judge ourselves so much harder than we need to. And I think that like blocks our true self a lot of the time, like what we look back in the mirror and see is always so much more harsh than the reality so, so I always think we need to just like as women give ourselves a break sometimes yeah. um and just like be easier on ourselves and if we could do that we'd have so much more confidence you know to not give a shit and just like go out and do what we need to do ask for that raise if you deserve it like ask for the promotion if you deserve it and not be afraid of what the other person's thinking on the other side yeah yeah because really it doesn't even matter no. Heard, yeah. And so one thing that's interesting, I've heard that when you have a child, in particular, a daughter, you start yeah. looking at yourself differently because you think, you know, I can't treat myself in a way that I would not treat my daughter. Like you almost are more kind. How has your relationship and now having a daughter changed how you treat yourself in that dynamic? Yeah, it's so interesting. And you're also so careful as to like, what I want her to like get for me, like, uh, she's just over one, and she like copies everything I do. And um, you just realize like, they're such sponges. And I truly just want her to be such a confident person and not hard on herself and I think it's such a positive thing having that because it's a direct reflection of me thinking like oh my gosh like this pure perfect little soul and I am helping to mold her and if I don't want her to think that like then why should I you know so I think it is a very like interesting dynamic to um really check yourself and say like and also the all the other like little crap like just goes away you're like I don't have time for that like that is so petty like I've got I've got you know I, I could be with my daughter right now like screw it kind of thing so I think that that's an amazing benefit of kids as well yeah and so what would you want Piper to think of her mom oh my god I get like super emotional because I didn't like my mat leave was my investor deal and it was, you know, two weeks after she was born, I was in like a five hour meeting, wow. um, trying to negotiate what ended up falling apart eventually. And so I, I know that I'm a better mom because I work and I also believe that what we're doing, Piper will look back on and be really proud of. And I have to remind myself of that all the time because 
because it is a, it's a full juggle. And definitely I have days where work ha has taken over massively and I don't get any Piper time. Like I miss her in the morning and I miss her when, when she's in bed when I get home. Um, but I think it's important to just cut out quality time instead. And so like I have a strict policy with my team that from five to seven when I get home, like unless something's like on fire, like I'm not gonna probably answer my phone um, and that's Piper time. And like, that's just, I don't have my phone on me. My husband does the same. And then we get to work the rest of the night after she goes to bed, like right now. <laughs> uh, yeah. So it balances that way. But I think that, you know, it's just a juggle. Like there's absolutely no balance to it. Yeah, I always hear like balance is an illusion and we really yeah. have to pick our priorities at that time and then kind of go from there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, everything's going to bleed and just accept that and know that something's not, you can't be everything to everyone. No. And that's exactly what I tried to do at the yeah. beginning. I was like, okay, amazing. I'm going to be the perfect mom, the perfect boss and the perfect wife. And it's all going to work. And it was, I'd be on a call trying to cook dinner and then like feed my daughter. Like it was just a complete shit show and I failed at everything. <laughs> and yeah. And then it quickly realized like I have to sacrifice one for the other. And as long as I believe that what I'm doing is, is making a difference and that my daughter will be proud of that decision then that's okay mm -hmm. and then you know yes I miss bath time and certain things that she's done for the first time but then I make up for them in other ways in other times that then I spend just with her and yeah. um, and I know that I like and I know I'm I'm a better mom because I work like I I just feel that way but yeah. um yeah cool so I want to dive into that a little bit more why I mean at this point you could, maybe you could sell wax on, or you could just drop it. Why are you building wax on? Like, why are you doing this? Yeah. So my like passion really behind it is the people we get to employ and like the women and the fact that like my goal is to be able to make my team's professional and personal like dreams come true by allowing them to continue to grow with our business. And if I can continue to expand and grow, they get that opportunity to have all of their career dreams come true. We have guest services, like our receptionist who now is a regional manager. And like those are what literally gets me up every day and makes it all worth it because I'm providing a amazing place for them to work. And if I can keep opening locations and expanding what we're doing, um, then I get to provide more jobs for more women and hopefully make those dreams come true. Neat. So what is your long-term vision? If we were to fast forward 10 years, what do you envision for yourself and Wax On? Wax on world domination. <laughs> <Love it. laughs> um, no, we're super excited like this year has actually been such a turning point for our business because we've gotten to a place where our location openings are like smooth and we have a great team and support. And so I'm finally able to like look at more opportunities with Wax On and how we can continue to expand um, our brand. So later this year, we have like some exciting like new product development um, launches that are going to be coming through. We also are looking to like tap more into our clients. Like we get to personally, I mean, we have women literally in their most vulnerable positions, like <laughs> telling, <right> yeah, <laughs> exactly. and they tell us everything. And like, we just have finally been able to take like basically what women are looking for and be able to try and put that together and, and offer that. So our main goal is to find new ways to help women feel more com comfortable and confident in their own skin. Um, and, you know, all of it has to do with pretty much your vagina, but yeah. that's what we specialize in. So that's what I, I'm like super pumped for. So we're going to continue to kind of like expand our offering to just, you know, focus on the women and, and what we really feel like they need from, from being so intimately close with them. How do you feel at your most confident? Like you have to walk in there and be the CEO. What are some tips that you would offer women to be there, to step into that version of themselves? Yeah, I think like 
it's important to know your numbers. Like, to be honest, like know your shit, like know what you're do, like what you're talking about because I I've always been like a studious person I've never been the smartest person in a classroom but I've always been very hard working and I find as long as I feel prepared I have so much more confidence mm -hmm. and so going into important meetings and those types of things like it then takes away that voice in my head that's worried about how they're judging me and immediately makes me feel like okay well like I know this like you can talk to me all day long and ask me questions, but like, I know what I'm talking about and I'm super confident and passionate about it. And that's going to ring true. Um, so I think that's a super important one. And, um, and again, like going back to just that self improvement and self awareness, like surround yourself with people who make up for your weaknesses. And that's what I've really done. And so if I have a solid team around me, that I feel like, okay, I know I'm not very good at this, but Amy's gonna be here beside me and she is awesome at that. She'll make up for that part of me that I might be a little less confident about. Yeah, neat. And what about your personal, you know, mindset, mental health, all of that? How do you maintain that? Because now that you're juggling a new baby on the way and family mm -hmm. and business, what do you do for yourself to make sure that you're there? Yeah. So I'm a big, like kind of intention setter journaler. Um, and I found, especially after having Piper, like I lost that like window of time that I used to just kind of sit and almost like daydream, but really kind of like set true intentions. Um, I'm a big believer that you can like manifest what you believe your future can be and, and ultimately get there. Um, and so I have made a point of like coming back to even if it's 15 minutes a day, I sit up and like this, which is office slash, you can see my Peloton behind <laughs> workout I, area. You're on your social media all the time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So this is my main area. Yeah. So come up here and just journal and like, bring myself back to like, okay, what's really important right now? What are my priorities? What are the intentions that I want? Um, and I find that if I can do that, I go into work with just such a clear vision of, you know, what I want that day to be. And it just runs more smoothly. Like there's something about that kind of meditating space that I really believe is so effective to, just clearing your mindset of like it's been chaotic in the, here in the morning and we've been running around and Piper's crying and all of this is going on and then just like okay let's breathe what is really important like write these things down what I'm grateful for and then like head in and start my day yeah so that keeps me sane along with working out hence the Peloton yeah. <laughs> and we talk about this all the time of just you need to make the time there's yeah. nobody else that's going to do it for you. It has to be on your priority list because you have to be, you have to take care of yourself in order to show up as that CEO and a mom and whatever other roles you pay, play in the world. Yeah. And it's important for me, like in, in our, with our management team, like I want to create a culture around the fact that like moms can work and we can make this work. And so I really try and make that flexible work schedule. Like I have someone who comes in at nine and leaves at two because they want to pick up and like make sure that they can pick up their kid. And all of those things are so important. And I, you know, we're, and I encourage like, get up, go work out during your day and like get off, you know, you're going to be more productive for it. Like sitting at a computer all day long, you're not going to be productive. Like yeah. you need to have those breaks. I think that goes back to what you were saying before about culture and leadership too. So if you ladies are managing other people and teams, think about what you need and then how you can give that to your team also, because you want them to perform at their best and mm -hmm. you want them to give you their best. And so see how you can do that and support them in that journey. Yeah. And ultimately, I mean, my like girls will leave at two o'clock, like they're back online at eight until like 11. And like, you know, like they're so bought into what we're doing together here that um, they're going to put the hours in. I don't need to put people on a time clock and have them punch in and out. Like we're all grown ups. Um, 
and ultimately like if you get your work done like fantastic like take Friday off like I don't care spend it with your family if that's what you need um and get that personal time in it's important and that's a testament of hiring the right people too so yeah yeah, you see it everywhere yeah and so what are some tips Uh, well actually quick question first when do you go to bed and when do you wake up Ah, good question. Um, so typically like bed at 11 and I used to be like 545, like up and on it. But since I'm pregnant with number two right now, it's definitely like 630 ish. I just like, can't, I'm, I don't have the energy and I know that I won't have the energy throughout the day if I, if I don't just get a few more, um, Z's in. So but I used to be very much a morning person. So sorry. Good for you. I mean, I'm still an eight to nine hour sleeper. I need oh, to like get amazing. that. It's just, I have to, or else I don't function yeah. in my day. It's, it's really good. Yeah. My husband and I are like almost competitive in our mornings. So it's really annoying actually. I wish he was like a lazy so yeah. that I'd be like, Oh, okay. Like, yeah, let's just sleep a little longer, but no. He's like the annoying alarm on a weekend person. And I'm like, we also have a daughter. What are you doing? Yeah, we don't need an alarm. She'll wake us up when she's ready. Yeah, exactly. We have a built-in human alarm. Like, she will be up without a doubt. Yeah. And so talk to us a little bit about your relationship with your husband. I know a lot of women in the community struggle with having a professional life and romance. I mean, and so I'm going to throw a bunch of questions out there to kind of get your mind going. But is it you know, a lot of women think, oh, I can't find a strong man or, you know, how do you, what are your relationship tips to help other female entrepreneurs and CEOs and boss babes to help manage that and find a good relationship for themselves? Well, it took us both till we were 30 to find each other. And that was through a lot of trial and error, more on his side, I'd say. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Like it was, And I think, and it was exactly that. It's, um, sorry, I should have closed my eyes. Um, So, you know, for us, it was really like, and for me, like I needed to find someone that was on the same program or at least close enough because, and, and he was in the exact same boat. Like we both work at nighttime. Like it's just, it is what it is. And of course we have great day nights and all those good things that we have to fit in. And especially now that we have a kid, like it's, like a mandatory like get it in the calendar we're going out and having fun I don't care how tired you are um but when we were dating like I dated a lot of people who were just like five o'clock came and they were like done work for the day and it was just like chilling and watching tv and I wasn't able to do that and it was a big issue in our relationship and so when I found Adam um he is in the same boat and he you know works really hard and so we kind of like it's funny when you're dating and like sussing them out and all of a sudden he's like you know what I just need to do a little bit of uh work here oh oh great yeah me too (laughs) like trying to you know feel each other out but um it's I think it's important in how you then fit in your time together so for example like we will walk like uh Piper and I will walk Adam to work in the mornings and we get time in that way. We always have dinner together after we put her to bed. And then it's like, let's sit down, let's work for the rest of the night. Um, but it's really hard to like, I've been so fortunate to find someone who's very much on the same page, very confident in himself and his career and so supportive of me and like what I'm doing and pushes me so much harder to be better and continue to, do this, um, which is important in the times where you're just like, Oh my God, how do I, how do I do it? Yeah. One of the conversations that we have quite a bit within the community is the masculine and feminine. And do you feel like your energy when you build a business? I know personally, I used to be like so much in my masculine of just like, go, 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 go. But then I also found that the men that I was dating were I guess, I mean, more on the feminine or needy side. So I really had to step into my own femininity and learning the balance to allow my boyfriend to be masculine, to be that male figure, because that I wanted a manly man and that's what I wanted. So how, 
you know, when working and being that strong figure, do you feel like you fall into that more feminine energy when you're with him? Or how do you balance that since you're such a, an independent and strong woman? Yeah. So it's funny because I used to find like such needy guys yeah. to Adam and finally like I broke the pattern with him. And it's funny because at the beginning I was like, I don't know about this guy. And then very quickly, like we were together like a year engaged and then baby like super quickly. So we've only been together three years and we're on to baby number two. So do the math. <laughs> but um, it's funny because in say when you're saying that, like, he is the only, really the only relationship that I've had where I love the fact that like he makes my decisions like outside of work. Like I get to come home and I'm like, we're going for dinner. You choose where we're going. Like, what do you want to eat? Like you do all the ordering. Like I just leave it to him to, to really truly be like the like masculine figure in our relationship. And I love it because it's kind of my like time to sit back um, and I also think it's important in the relationship as well, like that he gets to be that kind of role and, um, and that's important as well. But I think, uh, it's just also super, um, key to find someone who's very confident in their own shoes. Right. And I battled with that in the past for sure, where it was yeah. that worry and, um, yeah, it, it does, it doesn't work. So yeah. Are you nervous to now balance another child and work? Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know how you do it, girl. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, for sure. I I just remind myself that I didn't know how I was going to squeeze in a child in my old life, and I managed to do that. So I'm like, okay, like, I'll figure it out, oh. um, and we will. And And again, like, I have a partner who's so – involved and hands-on equally which is important and then I also have like an amazing nanny yeah. who <laughs> makes my job a lot easier and makes me feel not bad about leaving every day because my like Piper's obsessed with her yeah. so that's important so it's more is Lulu ready for the next baby <laughs> yeah that's so fun and now and then you're ready for your wax on national and like world explosion <laughs> yeah Exactly. Yeah. We're just yeah. doing it all at once, which is yeah. what my team always laughs about because yeah. I love to do everything all at once. But yeah. um, you know what? We like, again, like I think as women, we're so much stronger than we give ourselves credit for and we figure it out. And like, there's a reason we're meant to have babies and, uh, you know, like built to have babies, I should say. And it's because we're such like badasses and like can handle it. Mm -hmm. I say to Adam all the time, I'm like, you would be miserable right now getting fat like me. Yeah. <laughs> like, you would be really upset about it. Yeah, so, it's so true. I know yeah. there's something when we push ourselves to that max, that's when you know what you're made of. Like we are yeah. so resilient and that what we consider sometimes bad situations or challenging situations, I mean, you figure it out and then you amaze yourself every time. Yeah, yeah. exactly. You truly do. And I, um, yeah, so I haven't figured it out right now how I'm going to manage it, but um, hopefully I do. <laughs> yeah, you'll, and then I'm sure like you, like you said before, you may fail in the beginning, but then you find that balance and then it all kind of works out, you know? Yeah, I think it's important. Like this time I will just have zero expectations. I had like, high expectations on I'm going to take like a six week mat leave and like try and like I'll do my emails but like really try and be low key and it was the complete opposite and that was <laughs> coming. so this time I we have no no like expectations and then hope for that <laughs> yeah, and so you're expanding your family do you mm -hmm. are you going to expand wax on to the U.S. and other countries yeah, definitely eventually. Like, so we're looking in the next two years, we'll be expanding outside Ontario into, well, we're already in Halifax, but we're focusing on like Calgary, Vancouver and those areas. Um, and then in our five-year plan is, is the U.S. So absolutely, like we're super excited about that. Um, and it's either we'll be going ourselves or if we find the right strategic partner, then we'll... Um, franchise it to the state. So yeah. And what are some tips then we'll go back to a couple business tips before we finish up. Um, but what, 
are some tips that you would recommend for people who are looking to scale, looking to expand? I know you're on a ton of panels and you get asked these questions a lot. What are your, yeah, what are some tips that you would recommend to other entrepreneurs when looking to grow? Um, so, you know, one of the things that I always say is, um, execute, like is, is to take that leap, like get to a point. Um, I'm a big believer in the 80, 20 and I apply it in our entire business, like get it 80% of the way there, Mm -hmm. launch it and then iterate and make changes after the fact. Um, because you'll never know you truly don't know what it's going to look like until it's out there. And so I think it's really important to like get it out there and then look at it and start to make those changes that need to be made. Um, because otherwise you'll never ever take the leap. So I think that that's like my most, you know, important part of it. Uh, Um, alongside, like I mentioned, like around passion and just having that true passion for what it is you're doing. Um, and as long as you have that hustle and grit, um, you can continue to grow your business and launch it and, have it be, you know, successful. So I think that those are super, super important in in growing and scaling the business. Mm -hmm. Um, And then, like we said, like a killer team, like just building people and having people around you that truly complement you and and make up for your weaknesses, like be a strong enough person to recognize where your gaps are. And and, um, it's important to know your strengths, but more so like what you need and put your money into that. So, um, I think that's super important. Uh, what were some of your biggest fails throughout this whole growth experience? Oh, I mean, a lot of fails, but like a lot of mistakes and you know, that's important because you get your best learnings. Yeah. Um, but like the, the most like obvious one from the beginning is really around like get yourself a solid accountant from day one because you just don't want to deal with that. Yeah. Um, it's just super annoying. Um, and then I think it's just like many fails in like hiring the wrong people and just getting, you know, at any time I've had a major failure, it's been when I didn't trust my gut. And so... I've always looked back and I've been like, I knew that and I went against it and I went against it and now it just, you know, slapped me in the face. So I continue to make sure that as soon as I have that like er, feeling like something's not right here, I just, I remove it or I, I, I jump on it. Like I just take care of it because it's never it's never steered me wrong so far. Yeah. And as women, we have such strong intuitions. We just need to. Yeah. Understand. Yeah. We really yeah. do. Yeah. I'm going to open up. Sometimes. Yeah. Like your head can overshadow that and you'd be like, no, no, it's just me being nervous or whatever. Like it's not. Yeah. Do you, so I'm going to go into some questions um, from people that are, that are here and just some extra questions. How do you balance? Like what is, what does your friend circle look like? So often we talk about, you know, maybe our friend, I know me personally, my social life sacrificed as I was growing Mm -hmm. and, and my relationship. And it just, you know, those were the sacrifices I made just knowing that I couldn't do everything. And I'm also really keen on continuing to surround yourself with people that inspire you, especially as an entrepreneur, we need to continue to support and inspire each other. So what does your social circle look like and how has that evolved with your business? Yeah. Um, so I think, like you said, like uh, it's, I think it's, I think they say like a reflection of like who you are is, is the four or five closest people to you. Uh, and that's super important to note, especially as one, you get busier Two, once, you know, I now have kids. So even on the weekends, it's like balancing that time of who we see, friend wise and, um, who we make sure that we make that time for. Um, I have like such a awesome group of girlfriends who a lot of them are actually entrepreneurial and also entrepreneurial, like only in the past kind of two to three years, which is super exciting. Um, and great to see like one of them just had their third child and decided to start a business. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, um, like super inspiring and we just fit in, like, we don't try and over, I think it's important to not over complicate it. It's like one day we do the first week of every month, we have like a dinner and if you can make it great, if you can't, no big deal. 
And so like I have that in, hopefully like I see them from time to time and text and we have a group text, whatever, but then the pressure's off. It's like, I know I'm going to see them then in my calendar. So if the rest of the month just is chaos, that's fine. Mm -hmm. Um, so I think that that works for like our friend group and making sure we stay, stay close. Yeah, neat. A lot of my friends are also international. And so I've done Zoom, like coffee and tea. Oh, I love like, that. Here and we're like, okay, let's chat. Like what's going on in your life? <laughs> so efficient. I actually want to Zoom just with my friends that are even here. See, I've done that too. It took a while for some of my friends to get used to, but I was like, look, I want to see you. You are yeah. a majority, but I can't. Like it takes a lot of time to go out and everything. Yeah. It was just, yeah. So Zoom works. I love that. <laughs> Zoom works too. Um, awesome. So a couple other questions. Why did you choose to franchise Wax On instead of doing it all corporate? So financially, for sure, it was one reason. Um, we felt like we were at a good place where we had a lot of the answers, but we also felt like, um, well, we also knew that we weren't going to be able to continue to grow at the same pace, um, without either me selling off a big chunk of the business or us franchising. And okay. so that's usually like why a lot of businesses choose to franchise. Um, we just wanted to make sure, okay, if we're taking this route, then we make sure we're really intentional, intentional about our franchise partners and who we're partnering with. Um, so I think that that's really important. Yeah. Would you do it the same way if you were to do it again now? Totally. Yeah. I'm so happy that we waited till when we did. Um, and we've been like, knock on wood, just so fortunate with the partners we have. They've all, they all were clients. Cool. Um, they're all women and they all came from like such various, like one was in finance, one was in law, one was in TV and, um, and, and they're awesome. It was such a great team. Neat. And so what would you be doing now if you weren't doing wax on? Oh, I think about it all the time. It, <laughs> and I actually would probably still be a management consultant, which is so, I probably would never have left my first managing consulting job, which is so crazy. Cause I have a friend who also works for the same firm and I look at her life. She's a partner now there, which is amazing. Yeah. And I'm like, Oh my God, like I feel your life would be mine had I never done this right like parallel universe <laughs> yeah yeah it's so, so cool. yeah it's like yeah. sliding doors or whatever that movie is yeah neat and then we have one more question if there's any others send them in and we'll answer them quickly before we finish up um how big was your first store like size I um let's get some clarification whoever asked that question size it was size? 50, 50, 1700 square feet which is a little too big oh employee wise yeah so we had 12 employees total, I think. Wow. I want to say. Yeah. Started, cool. and now we have 150. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And we have you a still, fun holiday party. Right? Do you still struggle with, like, what you're going to do and what you delegate to others? Yeah. I think that that's a big, like, you were asking around kind of growing and how you – like how I'm growing as a, in Your my consultant leadership skills. Skills. You're going to have to now keep me updated and be like, Vanessa, my consultant told me this, like, this is yeah. so cool that you have someone critiquing your leadership. That's really neat. Yeah. Cause yeah. he'll say like, put a pie chart together of like where you're spending the most amounts of your time. Like literally like in a week, where are the buckets of time that you're spending? Yeah. And it's so amazing to have someone help you like come out of the zone you're in into a helicopter and look in and see like, where will I impact like the most amount of value into the business if I spend more time on? So like one of the things is that I don't get out to my locations as often as I want to. And so being able to like do that more and things like that. So it's so cool. But yeah, it's, um, he, uh, helps you, <laughs> helps you take that big kind yeah, of top, that's cool. top level view. Yeah. Just nice. What else do you want people who are listening or watching to know about you or, wax on? I think it's, you know, I mean, I guess we talked about a lot of it. Um, this is just me. And like, I love that you do this webinar format because I am like at home. I just put my daughter to bed. Like my husband's at an event. She was screaming. I was so worried. I wasn't going to be able to get on there here in time. Like it's so chaotic and that's the reality of it. Um, and I think a lot of the times like entrepreneurial life is like glamorized. 
Um, and it's, and it's really hard work. And I also think that there's nothing wrong with just being kick-ass in your job and that you can be an entrepreneur at your work, like in that career as well. Like you can just get to the top of the, you know, fields that you're in and that is entrepreneurial in its own right. So I just think that if you, you know, like I just think it's important to understand the realness of, of what we're doing and that it isn't always for everyone. No. And I also think though, it's an important conversation to have because now as AI comes in, Mm -hmm. there are a lot of people that are in the workforce that are going to be thrown into entrepreneurial roles right? because they'll have no other choice. So it'll be really interesting to see how just our economy shifts and roles that people end up taking in our world. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, one more question and then we will say goodbye and thanks for your time. Uh, but the question is that there is a saying that you know who your true friends are when you start your business. Did you find that your relationships and friendships changed when you started Wax On and you became more successful with your business? I think a little bit. I think that you definitely have the people that you're super, super close with and that you realize you can lean on no matter what. Um, It's a hard, there's a hard point when you're an entrepreneur, especially if you're growing a business and you're, you know, you are going to have struggles and there's going to be major roadblocks. And you think that you could naturally lean on your family. And my parents have been so supportive through this, but you also don't want your family to worry. And so you kind of like put up a block as well to make things okay. And so I definitely had friends who like, I had one friend step up and lend me a hundred grand because we like oh. were going to miss payroll one, one week. And, um, cause we opened four stores in like two and a half, three years and wow. it was just chaos. And so I think in those moments you truly see like, who's going to step up and believe in what we're doing and, um, come to the table. And that person is now, you know, Wow. one of my closest and dearest friends and so did you ask her to do that how did that even happen no um and actually it wasn't 100 I was like 50 anyways yeah. it was I can't remember the no, exact number but it was helpful yeah. <laughs> um but no I didn't um she I walked in I remember it so vividly to meet her for drinks and she just saw like the anxiety and angst in my face and like she was like what is going on and I'm like oh my god like we're just growing so fast and like nothing's wrong with the business. Like there wasn't, it was legitimately like just a cash issue. And, uh, as every business like will have. And it was that moment where she was just like, yeah, I'll help you. And I was, I was so taken aback. I was like, what do you mean? She's like, what do you need? Like, tell me how much you need. And we put an agreement in place and wow. I paid her back really quickly. And it was just one of those moments where, someone steps up and just like has got your back through and through. And it's um, like the most amazing yeah. thing to be. So you're still vulnerable in situations. Yeah. <laughs> you there we go. Easily said like, Oh, it's just work. You know, yeah. but you we're able to just be oh, real yeah. and be vulnerable. You should, yeah. You'll, you should go back and tell your consultant now, like, see, I'm vulnerable. <laughs> <laughs> I did this. Seven years ago, or whatever it was. Right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. so cool. That's awesome. Um, yeah. So we have a couple comments, and the just thank you for sharing and for uh-huh. being inspiring to so many women. Honestly, I admire you from afar, and I'm just so happy to connect with you virtually right now and and thank hear more about your story because I think you're spectacular, and I'm you. just so grateful for you to be here. And thank you for sharing. It's really well. Cool. Congrats to you too because yeah. you're truly changing women's lives and offering what you do, and it's so important. And I wish when I was getting started, I had this. So I'm happy I do now um, because it's just super important. And um, yeah, it helps women get out there and kick ass, which is important. Awesome. Maybe we can come do an event at a wax on on like confidence and get ready for women to, you know, like you were talking about before, show their vaginas at your places. They need to be confident. And I think it's such a huge thing. And just impacts social lives as well as business and confidence is such an important thing. So yeah, thank you for everything. Cool. Alrighty. Thanks ladies. Have a great evening. Bye. Bye. Thank you.